What is going on YouTube? It's Dakota from D Caldwell Photography and I just wanted to dedicate a few minutes before my next photo shoot to talk about zoom lenses. So zoom lenses, I feel like every photographer should have one between that 24 to 70 or 28 to 75 focal length range because they're extremely versatile and you don't have to worry about switching and swapping out lenses in the middle of a shoot. And I honestly found one lens that I think is the best zoom lens of all time. That is the 28 270 f2 canon rf lens this thing is a freaking monster For this shoot, I only shot at f2 because I really wanted to test it at its maximum aperture. The results I ended up getting with this lens in terms of sharpness and image quality is something that rivals some of the prime lenses that I've used. This lens is absolutely tack sharp at f2 from 28mm all the way up to 70mm. Now, this lens is a tad bit bulky compared to my Tamron 28-75 or the 24-70 G Master lens. Pairing it with the Canon EOS R6 definitely made it front heavy and for some folks, the size of a lens can make or break a potential purchase. But for me, size isn't much of a turnoff as I own and religiously use the Sigma 105 Art and that lens is probably the heaviest lens known to mankind. Is 28-70 a good focal range for zoom lenses? For some people, no, especially depending on what they are shooting. The big plus for the 24 to 70 G Master lens was that extra 4 mm starting at 24 for a variety of tasks such as vlogging, street and landscape photography. I don't ever see myself going wider than 28, especially since I mainly shoot portraits, and if I needed a wider field of view, I'd ideally take a couple steps back. Also, when using this lens, I did notice the zoom ring was a bit difficult to turn. I get the purpose behind this as if there was less resistance anytime this big lens was flipped upside down or not facing straight up, it would automatically zoom out due to its weight. It's not the biggest deal, but it did get annoying at times during the shoot as I am not used to having to use so much force when zooming in on other zoom lenses. We found a really chic looking hotel in the downtown area and decided to use that for the second half of our shoot. I always say you don't know how a lens will really perform if you aren't shooting at least once in low light. This hotel lobby was dimly lit, so it made for a great low light test. Honestly, these photos came out really nice. The focusing was extremely quiet and fast. Out of about 40 or so portraits taken in this lobby, only five of them were out of focus. If you are watching this video because you are on the fence of purchasing this lens, then I would strongly advise for you to rent it first. Between the size, its weight, the starting focal length of 28, and the zoom ring resistance, when people test this, it's either going to be a strong yes or a definite no. If you are a portrait or wedding photographer that likes having a shallow depth of field in their photos, I definitely recommend this 28-70 lens for you. If I owned a Canon camera, other than the 85RF f1.2 lens, this f2 zoom lens would also be in my camera bag. At one point, I only shot portraits on the 35 or 85 prime lens. Now, 70mm definitely isn't 85, but because of the f2 aperture of this lens, you won't be missing the blurred background and image separation on portraits that you get when shooting with larger focal lengths. And if you love dreamy out of focus backgrounds that fast aperture prime lenses provide and also want versatility, then this lens is definitely for you. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you own this lens or if you're thinking about purchasing it. Also, make sure you drop a like if you enjoyed the video as it tremendously helps my channel. And make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming content. Thanks again and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.